Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Now in this one we're going to learn how to create a health bar that fills up and empties, so just download the project files from up here or in the description below and let's deal some damage. Okay, welcome to the editor and of course make sure to download the project files, import the Unity package and then go to scenes and open the main scene and you'll see what I have in front of me. And so the first thing that I want to do is just make sure that we get our health bar asset here all set up. And it's going to be a world canvas um, that will just have a fill slider. So let's go ahead and work on that right now actually. Um, so why don't we go into our uh, hierarchy view here and then go ahead and create a new canvas. So UI and then canvas. Okay, and I'll call this health bar and I'll change it over here from screen space overlay to world space and I'll change the reference pixels per unit to one. Now in our health bar what we have to do is well actually let's find where it is first and I'll set all of its uh, transform properties here so why don't we go ahead and set its width to 4.42 and its height to 1.03. Now these values are more exact than, um, than necessary but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using these predefined values. So now, actually for the position, I'm going to go ahead and set um, the X and Z to the same thing as our enemy here. So actually to do that, I'll just set the health bar as a child of the enemy, and then I'll hit 0 on X and Z, and then I'll just pull it off of the enemy there. Okay, and so now I'll just set its Y position to 3.51 and hit Enter. Okay, perfect. So now we have our health bar, but now we need a panel inside of it for the backing of our health bar, and we're going to need a slider inside of it. So let's go ahead and right click on the health bar here, and then hit UI panel. And then in here, let's go ahead and I'll set this coloring to black. And now I'll right click on this health bar panel here after renaming it to health bar backing. Okay, and now we'll right click on this um, and we'll hit UI and we'll hit slider. And don't freak out because we'll get a giant slider here. Um, and what we're going to do is just go ahead and set um, the rec transform so that it doesn't look as intimidating here. So I'm going to click on this anchoring position to a stretch on every side. And I'll go ahead and set our left to 0 0.205, our top to 0, our right to 0 0.205, and our bottom to 0 as well. Okay. Now we still have a mess, so what we're going to do is go ahead and get rid of our handle slide area because we do not need the handle. And we can go ahead and get rid of this background as well. And we just need the fill and the fill area and the slider. So let's go ahead and check out what's going on here. This uh, X means that it is going in a negative position, so I'll slide from the left all the way to the right here. and. Let's go ahead and put this inside of our backing. Okay. All right, and now for our slider, let's ensure that this is the correct size and I'll leave it how it is. And for the fill area, let's go ahead and set this to a stretch and I'll go ahead and set everything to zero so that it matches exactly the fill area we have here. Okay, perfect. So now our health bar doesn't look as weird and it actually looks more like a health bar. What I'll do next is go ahead and set the color in here. So fill, color, and I'll set it to, you know, some sort of bright red here as a health bar normally would be. And my apologies for that. Um, so let's go ahead and rename all of these just so that we can be sure of what everything is here. So let's set this to our health slider. And then we'll set the fill area to be our health fill area. And the fill will, of course, just be our health fill. So let me go ahead and rename it here. The energy is not agreeing with me. Okay, so perfect. Now we have our health bar. And for the sake of it, why don't we go ahead and just drag this to be a prefab so that we can keep it for later. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and drag our value back up to 1 on the slider as it automatically went to 0. And the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and write our script for the enemy's health. Now this scene already allows us to fire bullets. It's from a previous tutorial. And what will happen is when we hit the enemy, it will print hit enemy. Now we don't want it to print, we want it to actually affect what's going on in the health bar here. 
and oh, we can slide this. Um, and so I'll go ahead and create a script here for our enemy's health. So let's create a C-sharp script enemy stats. And I'll go out of play mode just uh, because. And let's go ahead and double click on enemy stats here so that we can go ahead and view it. Okay. And I'll slide in our Visual Studio. And for the most part, we'll start with a lot of attributes here. So let's go ahead and just write our references to the components that we're going to be using. So to begin with, we'll have a public transform health bar. And we'll have a public slider health, oops, just slider. And I believe we will need to import Unity UI. So at the top here, make sure you write using unity.ui, unity engine.ui, sorry. And I'll call this health fill. Now let's have a float for what our current health is. And let's also have a float for what our max health is. And our last attribute here is the offset for our health bar on the y-axis. And this is just for visual purposes, so it will be the enemy's position plus two on the y-axis. Okay, so now we do not need the start function anymore. Uh, and we just need a function to allow us to change the player's health and a function to allow us to position the health bar. So let's start with that change health function here. So public void change health int amount, oops, amount, okay. And in here we're just going to have, we're going to add to the current health um, by this amount. So let's do current health plus equals amount. And if amount is negative, of course, it will just add on a negative number, thus subtracting it. So if we want to deal damage, we can just pass in a negative value to this function. Okay, so current health equals mathf.clamp. Now what we're doing here is ensuring that the health can never go under zero and it can never go over the max health. So let's go ahead and type current health zero, oops, zero and max health. Okay, and then at the bottom here we'll do health fill dot value equals current health divided by max health. And that's because we want to get a value between 0 and 1 that will turn into a, uh, a percentage, basically, of what our max health currently is. Okay, so now that we have our change health function set up here, uh, oh, and sorry to explain uh, this dot value here, this is of course our slider. Um, that will be the total percentage, like I just said, um, of the slider as well. So we'll see the slider be moving based on uh, whenever we change our health. Okay, so I'll write a private void position health bar. And then in here, we just want to uh, constantly set our position. So let's first grab the position from our transform. Okay. And now the health bar dot position is going to equal new vector three. And remember, we want the x axis and the y axis to be the same, but we want the current position, which is our transform or the enemy's position, uh, current position dot y plus health bar y offset. And then for the last part, we have a current position dot z so that we just keep the same z position. I'll get it, I'll put a new line in here just so we can see this more easily. And at the bottom here, I'll write health bar dot look at camera dot main dot transform. And this will give us a billboarding effect on our world space canvas that will make it so that the uh, health bar is always facing our camera. And we never have an issue of, you know, um, the rotation on the health bar being weird or difficult to see. Okay. So in our update function here, let's call position health bar every frame. Okay, and that should be all we have to do for this script specifically. Now, we need to change our bullet behavior script that we have already from this project. This is a script that will just call this print whenever we hit an enemy. What we want to do instead of just printing is we want to check if this object has a script that um, is the type of the enemy stat script. And if we do, then we want to make sure that we 
call that thing's change health so that we can see the change in the player's health here. We just want to check first uh, if we have an enemy stat. So let's write enemy stats, stats, and then we'll do a check. So if stats, oops, stats equals um, other dot get component enemy stats. And what this will do is if this returns null, then that means that there is no enemy stats. So that means if this is not true, then this is null, which means there is no component attached. And whatever this returns will be put into stats here. So what's inside of this if statement will not be called unless there is actually an enemy stats component attached, which means that we can then use this stats variable with the assumption that it does contain a real component and it is not null. So we can call stats.changeHealth negative 5. Okay, so our code is perfectly sound and it's working correctly, but we want to make sure that we can actually have all these components referenced in the Unity editor here. So let's go ahead and click on our enemy. Let's add our enemy stats script. And let's slide on our health bar here, which should be this rec transform. And let's drag on our slider as well. And let's set our max health to 100 and our current health to 100 as well. Okay, let's see how this plays. So now this bullet, which has that behavior attached, is able to hit this slider and we see our health going down and it works correctly. Now, obviously our player does not die or anything, so you'll need to add some sort of function that checks if the player's health is zero by the time it gets hit and then do whatever actions you want, such as exploding or falling over. All right, that is going to be it for this tutorial, and I hope it helped you out. If it did, make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe for more tutorials like this. And if you want to make your first game right now, don't wait, hit that card in the top right, and you'll find out all the tools you need to get started immediately. And you can also check out our course that's currently 93% off in the top right. There's a free sample video as well, and I will see you in the next video.